Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on this weekend. It is the River City Roots Festival this weekend. Last weekend was Labor Day weekend. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I went to a wedding. One of my coworkers here, Neil, just got married to his uh, longtime girlfriend, Anya. So they just uh, celebrated. They're celebrating their third year together this year, but they just got married this last weekend. So congratulations to Neil and Anya. So we're going to jump right into some news things. I don't have any city council for you guys, so here's some news in terms of people who are still interested in finding out about debris cleanups, tree, arborists, and all that kind of stuff. Some of the storm debris cleanup has wrapped on the drop sites as the city moves to chipping the bulk of the debris and going back to normal operations at Garden City Harvest. Crews from the uh, city of Missoula's Public Works and Mobility Department have completed scheduled neighborhood debris pickups within city limits. If you missed having your debris piles picked up, you can call 552-6360. Again, that number is 552-6360 to be added to the debris pile pickup list. Um, Pickups will begin Monday, September 9th, and will continue for a couple weeks. There is no set schedule for these pickups, so patience uh, is a virtue as they make their way through the calls for services uh, is appreciated. Please be aware that the service is for debris pickup only, and they do not provide chainsaw or arborist services. Historic Preservation has also had a presentation on expansion of Bernice's Bakery, which falls under the jurisdiction of Historic Registered Building, which requires extra care when building add-ons and renovations to these types of buildings. Another building in Fort Missoula is also requesting some services on build, uh, at the building at 27 Fort Missoula Road. We'll take a quick little picture right over there. So if you can see, this is the picture of one of the buildings at the historic uh, museum uh, at Fort Missoula grounds. And so the proposed work includes remove of the uh, French, t uh, French tile, the underlayment of bat uh, battens and counter battens, replacement of any rotting deck, deck boards, placement of new underlayment with ice and water shield, drip edges, copper valleys, insulation of new tiles that match existing in form, removal of one vent stack that is no longer in use from the rear facing slope of the roof, insulation of new rain getters to aid in water diversion. And that's basically your Bridge City Council uh, 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 report this week. There's not much going on this week. It was Labor Day on Monday. City will be back next Monday. They usually post their agenda today, uh, usually in the afternoon, if not the uh, Monday morning at the latest. So. Here are some of the newsworthy things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, Montana, and beyond this week in Montana Free Press Festival is at the University of Montana. It started last night with over 30 journalists, authors, leaders, and decision makers will host sessions in Missoula as part of the evening happening this weekend. On Friday, September uh, 6th, the headline keynote will feature a strategist and former White House Deputy Chief Staff Jim Messina, the architect of President Barack Obama's success in 2012 re-election campaign, joined by former campaign uh, rival and long time conservative uh, polit political strategist Matt Rhodes. Uh, Maritza uh, Gorgu, uh, news anchor for Scripps News and the host of the first and only national television news shows from Montana will moderate and headline keynote uh, featuring a special introduction by an, um, um, Ambassador and former Senator of Montana, uh, Max Baucus. Uh, from September 5th through the 7th, the University of Montana will be a part of the transformative experience that uh, celebrates the spirit of democracy, diversity, uh, and community engagement in Montana. And speaking of journalism, the Daily Montanan served us as a story of a state of patrol of uh, of, about the state of patrol officers in the state of Montana. It was originally reported uh, by the Daily Montana and highlighted quotes from members of the Montana Highway Patrol alleging micromanagement by the key division of Knutson, a Republican who is seeking re-election this year in the Department of Justice generally. Uh, quote uh, by, um, let's see, the, uh, let's see. Here's a quote in this article that says, this organization is a sinking ship caused by uh, Attorney General micromanaging uh, Missoula Highway Patrol. The outlet quoted one person as saying, a lot of these were anonymous surveys that were conducted by the Daily Montana. Another comment stated that the Attorney General and Department of Justice has no clue how to run the agency. In April, the Montana Highway Patrol fired a trooper and union president, Alicia Bragg, after she provided a summary of a survey uh, to her labor representative because it included concerns about working conditions. In June, the Department of Labor and Industry found Missoula Highway Patrol likely committed an unfair labor practice when it terminated her. A hearing is still pending. No names were published in this survey created by the Connecticut-based Team Training Associates LLC and authored by the company's president, Elk, Eric Murray. Uh, this survey remains on the Daily Montana as they fight a cease and desist letter, which this week has a rough start 
for uh, Hellgate High School as the school was put on a lockdown because of a su suspected 17-year-old with a gun. Um, this story was through at a KPAX, and it turns out this was a replica, and the police were able to get consent from the individual to confirm and r relieve some, uh, sus uh, some uh, uh, suspicion after the fact. Uh, the Missoula Police Department stated, we take incidents like this very seriously and we are currently in contact with the students' parents as part of our ongoing investigation. Investigators will be consulting with the county attorney's office regarding potential charges. The Missoula Police Department want to commend students who reported the suspicious activity, highlighting their role in maintaining a safety in safe schools. The prompt actions of these students and coordinates response by our officers ensured a quick and safe resolution to this incident. The Missoula Police Department would like, would like to remain remind the community of the importance of reporting any suspicious activity or potential threats to school administration, SROs, or law enforcement. If you see something, say something. Your vigilance uh, contributes directly to the safety and security of everyone in our community." End quote. Um, Hellgate has had a scare in recent years. Uh, coming back from the pandemic, uh, April 2023 connected to a social media threat that locked down high, Hellgate High School as well. And in uh, April 2024, the University of Montana campus that turned uh, out to be a hoax was very much like the trend of swatting where police were called in a threat of some kind of violence that involved SWAT teams being called into action to control a potentially sensitive situation. From the 90s and 2000s, many of those similar uh, threats had to do with bomb threats because the Unabomber was such a, a big part of the uh, United States at that time, which I lived through, and I had to deal with my own um, uh, lockdown. Not necessarily lockdown, but we had to have, have a walk out of the building back in 2007 when there was a bomb threat. So it was in the middle of the winter. Okay, bombers. Okay, unfortunately this week, the U.S. did report a school shooting by a 14-year-old in a Georgia school. You probably heard about it all week. That's all the news media has been talking about. Colt Gray, the 14-year-old suspect, has been charged with a, as an adult in the shooting Wednesday outside Atlanta that killed four people and wounded nine. He is accused of using an assault-style ri uh, rifle to kill two students and two teachers in the hallway outside his algebra classroom. Uh, Georgia Bureau of Investigation Director Chris Hawley told in a news conference. The shooter was investigated in May 2023, but the police had no merit to arrest the kid about online threats to commit an unspecified school shooting. The teen at the time denied those allegations, saying that he uh, removed those, uh, he quit those posts and somebody took up the mantle on the quote unquote Discord app that a lot of kids these days have been using. When deputies spoke to Colton Gray and his father, the father said he had hunting guns in the house, but his son did ha have access to the guns without supervision. The teen himself told deputies that he had not made the threats online. Several months after this um, interaction with deputies, Colt Gray is accused of shooting 13 people, four of whom died Wednesday at the Appalachia High School near Winder, Georgia. They will appear in court later today. And back in Montana, Holland Link is back in the market as a private property adjacent to the public access is once again being impacted by developers. And on Tuesday afternoon, there was about 75 Swan Valley residents settled in the Condon Community Center to hear what the two potential buyers planned on the controversial Holland Lake Lodge. The facilities sit on the U.S. Forest Service land, so the lodge owner must have a special use permit from the Forest Service and get agency approval f for any changes such as expansion. The last attempt to expand would have cut off access to public use in the place of Park City-based ski corporations, which saw the police in the community and beyond start the Safe Holland Lake movement, which ended the campaign. Um, this week, the meeting saw more than 75 residents in the area of voice concerns about a potential repeat of this development. So far, the new plans would have an option uh, to buy as is or go through the public engagement process of this expansion, which would require the Forest Service's uh, approval. So the developer has until October to decide to buy and has been looking to buy for about a year before this meeting was called, which some public comments during that meeting were short noticed. Um, does the phrase, here we go again, apply to this story? Missoula Current sure implied that in this particular story. So up next, we have uh, another segment I'm going to skip right to before uh, I show you any videos. Um, we're going to kick it off with some pre-critic where I prejudge a movie, whether it needs it or not, um, based on my own biases towards movies in general. So let's rehash the old days of 1980s with Beetlejuice with the sequel film, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. From the maker of the first one comes yet another movie starring a ghost with the most, or should I say the least, 
since we saw the last movie, Michael Keaton will be in this movie for about 17 minutes because for some reason it had to make a staple that the fact that he was in the last movie for 17 minutes, they had to do the exact same thing because why uh, rock the boat? Because audience are sensitive to change and uh, but enjoy a modern take on what was popularized uh, Ghost Hunters Beyond the Exorcist, which became overrated as soon as they came out with a sequel. I assume there is another wedding happening, but Beetlejuice will have to deal with the one of his ex-wives who died, but you can't necessarily die if you're already dead, uh, but you can't really get rid of the dead in these kinds of movies. So also the trailer showed people getting sucked into their phones as Tim Burton meant a commentary on how people just constantly look at their screens and whatever. So, uh, but you know, put, you know, those are the, that's the kind of movie that you can expect from this one. I, I assume this is probably going to have the same kind of premises where somebody dies and there's a whole journey into the afterworld and then Beetlejuice happens to be there and just kind of messes everything up. All right, the next one is a, um, an interesting movie. It's called The Front Room. Racist in-laws with horror elements put in this movie uh, uh, to the forefront of an elder woman who is just so happens to be a confederate with a certificate of authenticity as she tortures her daughter-in-law with such tropes as your mother is racist to she's from a different time to she's up to something to elder abuse to hide the fact that the old lady is bananas and the uh, black mother is just trying to live her best life while she's pregnant but the other but the other older woman isn't making it easier to give birth without spooky elder person doing witchcraft of some kind anyway watch uh, this will probably escalate to the house burning and the elder woman corpse gone missing and the baby being saved by the husband being, you know, maybe we shouldn't live with the in-laws. Wah, wah. And then that's, that's what you can expect from those movies. And then we have The Thicket. This movie sounds like uh, my autobiography, but, uh, but stars Peter Dinklage in a role about being a cowboy who hunts down killers and wanted folks who have done bad things. But this next job might be way, way, way over his head. Uh, first and last short joke, I promise. Stand tall against the Wild West as the story stars a uh, little person, Peter Dinklage, in the Wild West story that essentially is just a run-of-the-mill story about someone who is wronged and finally hires a dangerous man to fight an even more dangerous man in this typical, this town ain't big enough for the one and a half of us. Finally, we have a documentary that kind of tells the untold story of Abraham Lincoln because for some reason we need to have a, yet another biopic book about Abraham Lincoln. And this one's about how gay he is. Basically, people do some re did some research on Abraham Lincoln and found that he lived with a man and shared a bed for about four years, thus looking for evidence through writings and more to prove that the theory that his troubled marriage, which he actually did have a troubled marriage with his wife, was clearly an indication of homosexuality. Uh, I suppose this movie is the perfect timing for calling out the current Republican Party for their crude yet hilarious relationship with the gay community where they've basically harbored anti-gay sentiments and then they're secretly gay in the end. It's, it, it, it seems like it's, that's what it's kind of always been betrayed as. It's kind of funny. But anyways, that's the kind of a documentary just kind of like rewriting history for uh, I guess modern audiences. That's that's pretty typical of modern movies these days. Up next, we have a new dub and stuff where I technically do the exact same thing, where I uh, take old movies and dub over my voice, but I do it for more unique value. I'm not really doing it for any kind of um, purpose than just to try to be funny. So, anyways, here is dub and stuff from the 1939 movie Rose of Washington Square. So I told them, I told them, I told them a long time. I told them, I told them, I told them all sorts of things. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, you guys quite understand what I was talking about? I told them a lot, but they don't listen. Well, I still don't think they should have banned you for talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're probably yeah. right. All right, come on, old timer. I'm only being nice to you for your daughter's sake. <laughs> well, you got my blessing, as long as you have a roof over her head. But does living in a carriage count? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, thanks for letting me navigate your horse. Perhaps maybe this will be an uh, incentive to help navigate your daughter. Let's oh, change wow. hats because hey, this is illegal. Hey, how you been? <laughs> Not so good. Well, did you win your Pokemon Go game? Yes, and I was supposed to meet up with Duke here. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm sure you are. I heard a rumor that you were playing Digimon. Uh, I don't quite know what you're talking yes, you about. Do. Yes, you do. There must be some kind of misunderstanding. Is this really the man that you want to be dating, playing Digimon? <laughs> because that's old hat. You should not... Well, it's not that bad. You should not be associating with this man. Let's get out of here. He's very small-minded. Oh, no, you don't. It's just a misunderstanding. Yeah, I need to get away the bandwidth of Pokemon stops that are in this neighborhood. I don't think I can even look at you. You should not be dating this beautiful woman if you're just playing... Now, you listen here. Oh! 
How could you? How could you do that to him? It was so mean. Uh, he it, thinks he's too good for Pokemon Go, but I don't think so. Uh, Pokemon Go is overrated. I stopped playing months ago. Oh, it's okay. You can pick up where you Absolutely left off. Absolutely not. After the way you treated him. Huh. Well, fine then. Hmm. Are you okay? I accept you for the, all the Digimon. Uh, when, geez. where, and how. Well, that escalated. Ugh. All this for a little bit of Pokemon Pocket Monster, jeez. Ugh. Are you okay? Should I call the police? Yeah, I think I'll be okay. How can people get into fights for such trivial matters? <sighs> you know... I just don't get it. In this day and age, there's nothing to get or explain. Oh, sorry about that, uh, snow. There's ice on the oh, road. Oh, I find it. A little excitement goes <laughs> a long way. We should have way. had a good time with you. If only we could have invented chains for you. Well, chains are real. They can't hurt you. <laughs> what happened? What is going on here? Well, it was just a little spat about Pokemon Go and Digimon. Boys and their hobbies. Do you want to file a police report? Well, I think Pokemon Go... I, for one, really like Digimon. Oh, I could really use a biscotti about uh, now. Well, I think I need to reassess my life. I'll see you later. Mwah. Oh, thanks for the ride, boys, in the Automatron. Hey, do you want to ride to the hospital? We'll be more than welcome to take you in our Automatron. Ah, uh, don't worry about him. Digimon's coming back in a huge way, I tell you what. <laughs> you doing okay, partner? Oh, uh, yeah. We'll run him over for you. Hmm. Well, maybe. Well, I don't know about that. You know, I think I'll be on my way. You guys take care, okay? Uh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Develop a Digimon app? All right, we're kicking off the first Friday in September with your first Friday art guy for downtown Missoula, as tonight is not only the River City Roots Festival, but it's also First Friday, which is a great way to uh, expose yourself some, to some new art in and around the city of Missoula and beyond. So we're going to jump right in to the very first one, which is John Potter's uh, show opening. Um, this is going to be at Dana Gallery and is proud to host John Potter's new exhibit, Nature's Narrative which is opening tonight. John Potter was raised in two vastly different worlds, the Chicago area and Ladoduk uh, Reservation in northern Wisconsin, where he grew up in the deep love for the forests and lakes of his home, as well as the stories and life ways of the uh, Owich, uh, 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 Ojibwe elders. He uh, eventually went on to receive degrees in illustration and painting for the Utah State University and has been making his living as an artist for over 40 years. John Potter is the featured artist of this year's Norm McLean Literary Festival, one of 20 original oil paintings in this show. Holmes Embrace in the fe festival, uh, festival's signature image. It celebrates the July 2023 release of a small herd of bison into their Blackfeet homeland. John has generally agreed to share the sales of proceeds to, home, to his homes Embrace with the McLean Literary Festival as a fundraiser. You can visit the website to learn more about John Potter and register for his for the uh, McLean Festival. So then we have uh, Daphne Lorna, which is going to be at Montana Gift Corral. Um, the, the Montana Gift Corral is located at uh, seven, uh, 117 West Front Street in the heart of Missoula for a special First Friday celebration. Uh, Daphne Lorna is a creation of two uh, is. Two talented sisters, Daphne Lorna Evans and Cindy Evans, who share a passion for crafting beautiful designed metal earrings and necklaces. Their jewelry has a perfect blend of simplicity and style, offering pieces that are both casual and feminine, ideal for adventure. Then we have an art gallery at Bernice's Bakery, which is featuring the works by Suzanne Warren. It's called Four Sanctuaries. And in, she was quoted in saying, I've always loved to create and started sewing when I was about 12 for 10 years. I was a potter and I have explored other mediums. Uh, always a doodler and a sketcher, I turned my interest and attention back to fabric about 15 years ago. Most of my work is made from fabric I have, I, I hand dye or print, starting out with white cloth. Layers of images and colors are laid down using a variety of techniques, including mono printing, silk screen printing, stencils, hand uh, carved stamps, rubbing painting, 
and low immersion dyeing. The fabric is then cut, piece stitched together and faced. The finished piece is a combination of the design of influencing how the cloth is created as well as the unexpected results in the cloth influencing the ultimate design. So you can check this out. The Four Sanctuaries, the series began in 2024, represents a reflection of the time spent in the woods of observing, reflecting, and exploring. For her, the rhythm of the vertical shapes and patchwork of light and depth and serenity and profound stillness all mirror the depth, intricacies, and curiosities of life passages. Then we got Lucas Fallon is going to be at Flippers Tavern, Grill, and Casino is going to be uh, presenting new paintings. Um, stop by that folks place. Uh, Flippers, where the artist Luke and Fellow will be displaying a body of new paintings. Ours will present at 5 p.m. onward and is excited to show what he's been working on over the past few months. Many of these paintings feature cows. Uh, these works will only be hanging for one evening, so stop by while the iron is hot. Then we got photography and other art featured at Sacred Alley, featuring Jenna Nord's work captures the profound and transformative experience of motherhood, birth, and self-empowerment through her unique and soulful photography. As witness to motherhood, she del dedicate, uh, del uh, delicately documents the fleeting moments of connection and transformation that defines this journey. Her birth photography honors this intricate and unique detail of each birth story. Um, do -do -do. Um, let's see. Uh, celebrate the raw beauty and transformation power of bringing life into the new world. Jen offers actually luxury boudoir sessions through her primal medical photography ceremony and more. So this is definitely a selling point as well as showing off some of her own birth photos. Uh, so Home Resource is also doing an art show featuring the artist Tabitha Martinez and music by Cornbread Wallace and Kellen Seawart. And this can be at Home Resource tonight as well starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, then we have We the People, which is at Burnswick Gallery. The We the People is a mixed media art exhibit, uh, freedom of expression, democracy. Multiple artists will be featured uh, with performance by Craig Mantier. Special event on September 12th includes a reception by Burnswick Gallery from 4 to 5.15, following a panel of the, art art of the arts and democracy at the, art, uh, at the Missouri Art Museum from 5.30 to 7 p.m. That's a week from to, uh, from the Actually, it's going to be next Thursday from 5.30 to 7 p.m. But tonight you get a, 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 get a, a glimpse at the We the People art, as you can see right here. Then we jump right in over to the artist shop. Uh, and this is going to be featuring Between Two Pines by Bobby Almer. Oil and watercolor paintings of light falling on the landscape of western Montana. The show runs through September. Last two ones, we have a sense of place at the Confluence Center. This exhibit will showcase the range of Megan Hansen's artistic ability from her reclaimed wood landscapes to acrylic and watercolors. Each piece is adeptly conveys her love of nature and architecture as well as illustrating her belief that taking time to experience a place through creating art helps her know the place as well as document it in a unique way to remember and share with others. Finally, we're going to wrap things up with a art gallery called the Art Hangup and Pieces Gallery. And this is going to be featuring uh, uh, Rosella Monster, Monstellar, R Rosella Monstellar and Jane Piazza. Uh, so Rosella has a strong education in the visual fine arts and creative writing beginning with the School of Art in Chicago and uh, Art Institute in Chicago and in with the Academy of Art University in San Francisco where she earned a Bachelor's of Fine Arts degree. Scholarship honors connected to both of these exceptional institutes recognized her and her work. Jane is an experienced travel consultant with a demonstrated history of working in the fine arts industry, strong arts and design, professional skills in nonprofit organization, printmaking, art education, studio art, and event management. And of course, as we break things up a little bit differently in my show, I just wanted to highlight that I'm going to throw it over to a promo and some fun videos from our summer camp kids uh, before I jump right into some events that are happening in and around Missoula, including the River City Roots Festival. Sorry, you need to put the camera away. You cannot have this out in the library. I didn't do it. Okay. You cannot 
put the camera in this library. You have to put it away. You Why? Need to do this. Why? I don't care. I'm putting you guys in a room where I'm gonna call your parents. Oh no, a room. My parents. parents. What's that's crazy. Dude. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yo, wait, where did he go? Yo, where did he go? He's probably just messing with us. Yeah, I know. Wait. Yo. I think okay, he's... he's just messing with us. Yeah, he'll, he'll come back. He'll just come back eventually. Yeah. you're checking out the view, I'll just be reading. This is a great book. Yo, how's the view? Oh, it's pretty good. Wait. Yo. Yo, guys. What happened to him? He's unresponsive. Dude, I don't know what happened. I just don't know. Buds, fighting the evil Skellymen. You never steal our Bubble Hill, Skellymen. <laughs> I will take over the Bubble Hills. Go, Go Robots! MCAT Animation Drop-In Workshops every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. Located in the Missoula Public Library, 455 East Main Street. I'll get you next time, Robots! Next time! Go robots! Go! You can't stay in your bed the whole day. Oh, obviously. It's Patricia. Why are you a puppet? I'm not a puppet. I'm an independent woman. Hmm. Uh, am I going crazy? Yeah, you probably are. Yeah. You're a puppet. No, I'm not. How dare you? What's going on? What are you doing? I'm trying to make an animation here. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's jump right in. So before I get going on more, more of my typical events, 
uh, for you guys. I'm going to talk about some of the events that happen at the River City Roots Festival. As I look at right here, kicking off is Spruce Allen Sally. Going to be performing, kicking off the events uh, starting at 1230 this afternoon at the downtown area. Uh, so downtown Missoula River City Roots Festival. This is going to be uh, a closed off street off of Main and Ryman Street. So those whole areas, parking garage can be used to still park. They still have those guidance for people to go in and out of that building for uh, people to have their regular parking. So 1230, Spruce Alley uh, Sally. 2.30, uh, Give Em Up, Florabella. Um, to 4.30, Ashley Flynn and the uh, Riveteers. Uh, 6.30 is Soul Driven Train. Um, 8.30 p.m., uh, the band The Heathens. Uh, it's all going to be performing on their uh, makeshift stage that's going to be at the end of Main Street, uh, just right next to the uh, uh, Zootown Arts uh, Community Center. Also Saturday, they got Rymos. Uh, is going to kick off your Saturday at 12. Cowboy Andy and the Salamanders is going to be at 12.30 p.m. The Spills is going to be at 2.30 p.m. The, the Vince Herman Band is going to be at 4.30 p.m. on Saturday. 6.30 p.m. The Ra uh, Rapid Grass is going to be at 6.30 p.m. And then wrapping up the show on your River City Roots Festival Saturday night is the High Hawks at 8.30 p.m. And they're they have some uh, past performances on their website as well if you're interested in learning about some of the past performances. This is the 18th annual River City Roots Festival, which also has a, a family uh, Roots Festival that happens on Saturday only from, 8, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. MCAT will be involved with that from 10 to about 2 p.m. Uh, but during this, they have some stage events that are happening there. They have Child Bloom, Bloom Guitar, so if you had your kid in Child Bloom Guitar, and also Future Guitarists, uh, that's happening from 10 o'clock to 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Spencer is going to be uh, playing at, at 11, uh, 11.15 a.m. At noon, Double Bubble Dance Party, 12.30, Wailing Aaron Jettings. Uh, two, uh, 1.30 to 2 o'clock, Double Bubble Dance Party to wrap up those activities for your family-friendly Roots Festival. So those are what's happening there and my assumption for the River City Roots Festival is happening this week instead of last week in August because of Labor Day or the idea that today is First Friday and people will be out in droves this weekend including MCAT on a Saturday boothing for kids friendly events at the park from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, as we go into the year it is the beginning of fall and also the uh, has waste days. Missoula County will be hosting a hazardous waste days during the first full week of September, this will be a drop-off by appointment with a $10 fee collected to help cover costs of and increase the amounts of uh, properly dispose of this uh, hazardous waste materials. During these days, large quantities of household chemicals will be accepted as well as some of the unlabeled and unknown items. This drop-off is different than last year uh, and made possible because of the special arrangements. There will be over 700 appointments available through the weekend. Registration is $10 as it's non-refundable. The drop-off size is 1305 Scott Street, but you do have to register. Uh, click, you can click the registration button on the website. Uh, I do not believe they do any kind of walk-ins. So the nope, this says no walk-ins allowed. So you're going to have to set it up beforehand. You can Google Hazardous Waste Days in Missoula to find out more information, or you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, so the Hazardous Waste Days are happening today, 8 to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 to 4 p.m. And then as we go into more of the things, it is fall season. School started. Life Learning Center has so many different events happening, which include beginning pickleball, various other classes to help people have uh, additional education without the full co commitment of going to college. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the university's Molly program too, which is another uh, uh, expansion to get uh, accredited college class without enrolling at the University of Montana. Missoula Butterfly House and Nexaritarium open hours starting at 10 a.m. It's a great way for getting involved with bugs, uh, family fun time. These are all indoor stuff as things get a little bit cooler. Think of the, some of these places, Mismo Gymnastics, Fruit Jacker Sports Center, Get Air, Indoor Trampoline Park, and the YMCA to get the blood flowing. Missoula Food Bank meal distribution at 10 a.m. Uh, Tiny Tales at 10.30 a.m. here at the Public Library. Montana State, uh, State Hemp and Cannabis Festival uh, is going to be at Lolo Hot Springs starting at 11 a.m. today. So Hemp Fest is happening. Yarns and Watercolor on the fourth floor, uh, noon today at the uh, Missoula Public Library. Um, All Abilities Art Club at Base is going to be at 1 p.m. as they always are on Fridays. Hands-on Science, Crazy Chemistry at Spectrum Discovery Center here on the second floor of the Missoula Public Library. Lego Club is back to the normal time at 2.30 p.m. every Friday moving, on, uh, moving forward at Missoula Public Library in the Imaginarium. Uh, that's on the second floor. You can't miss it. Most, most kids' events are on the second floor at the Missoula Public Library. Groundbreaking, National Conservation Legacy Center, National Museum of Forest Services 
is doing a, uh, break, a groundbreaking for the Natural Conservation Legacy Center, which is going to be off the Highway 10 at 6305 in Missoula, Montana. Uh, and also you can build your crate of, oh wait, wait, hold on. Yep, and then as I said before, they have the Montana Free Press, the inaugural Free Press event that's happening in the Dynamic 3-Day event for the uh, Montana uh, Free Press org. They have all this information on their website, and it's a press junket. Um, and then I was just saying about some of the additional courses that you want to go to the University of Montana without actually having to enroll in the University of Montana. They do MOLLI classes, M-O-L-L-I, registration for non-credit academic courses are now offering and are now open, and it kicks off. It's already kicked off, so you can look up the University of Montana through their MOLLI program, see what kind of classes you want to get accredited for. It's a great way that they've been just uh, having classes for people who just want to take one class without the full commitment. Neon Rodeo's anniversary drag party, uh, Neon Rodeo Tattoo, which is on 415 North Higgins Avenue, is doing a drag show on uh, Friday, September 6th at the Missoula Favorite Alleyway. Neon Rodeo invites you to giddy up and get down with us in the shindig to end all shindigs. So there will be raffles, there will be merch, and there will also be a keg. There will also be live entertainment provided the local favorite drag, hag, Iris Vaughn Moxie and her gaggle of rascals. And the show starts at 7 p.m. Get ready for a good old time. Uh, Missoula Outdoor Cinema, bring them home starting at 6.30 p.m. at Head Start Park. Uh, John Floridas at Old Post at 7 p.m. Paul and Leva Cadaldo at the Jack Saloon playing some country music at 7 p.m. At 8 p.m. at Monks, they're going to do Dead Eye Production Presents. Gaytheist, Wolf Eye, Itchy Kitty, and Panic Boner is going to be playing electronic music, DJ, hip hop, R&B, all that kind of stuff at Monks Bar. The Band of Heathens, like I said, is going to be uh, wrapping up uh, your downtown Missoula River City Ridge Festival at 8.30 p.m. tonight. Off in the Woods at the Top House is going to be playing some funk and reggae at 10, 15 p.m. It's a great way to transition from the downtown uh, Roots Festival to continue the party all night long. And then as you uh, wake up and uh, hopefully wake up early enough to go to the Saturday market, it happens from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. All the markets here in the downtown Missoula area from the Red X's to the Under the Bridge, great way to get involved with local community and locally grown produce. River City Roots Festival, there's doing also a fun run for Miller, and this is starts at 125 East Main Street at 8.30 a.m. Farmer's Market, community flow yoga and ritual yoga at the Best Reed Park. So they're doing a uh, yoga adjacent to the River City Market by the bridge. Uh, Shoot SIG by BSPSC and WMG Deer Creek Shooting Center. This is a great way for people to get involved with shooting. Guns and gun responsibility starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. The Prairie Sisters Vintage Market at Fort Missoula. Shop some vintage markets and stuff like that. Knickknacks and old, some old stuff at the Fort Missoula starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday. English is a second language class. The Missoula Public Library has been doing this quite often for the last couple months. So this is a great way for people, for people who are uh, not... Um, who don't know how to speak English to take these kind of classes to brush thing, to brush it up. And Missoula Public Library has a great resource here starting every Saturday at 11, 9.30 a.m. Makerspace walk-in starting at 10 a.m. at Missoula Public Library. This is a great way for people to get involved in the makerspace. 3D printing, laser scanner, all those kinds of things. Uh, and also, uh, I believe they can in Braille, wood, and crystals. They have a laser here, so it's pretty cool. Family Roots Festival at the Karis Park, like I said, from 10 a.m. to 1, 2 p.m. MCAT will also be there doing some abridged uh, stop animation with some all the other fun treats. Um, story time at Missoula Public Library at 10.30 a.m. Moon Randolph Homestead. It's one of the only homesteads in Montana that are still operated through the city of Missoula and is a great way to get involved with some of Missoula's history, but also have some open space land that is there to be preserved for a long time. So it is open every Saturday at 11 a.m. It's a great way to get walking tours and see some of the places. I believe they'll be collecting apples pretty soon. Let's see. And as always, um, Missoula Art Museum has their museum's tour starting at 10 a.m. is a great way to get involved and learn more about the art here in Missoula, Montana. MCAT has our regular Saturday drop-in every Saturday starting at 1 p.m. It goes to 1 to about 3 p.m. So we're going to have some crossover with the Kids Root Fest and also the Saturday drop-in. Uh, KCD presents Where Did They All Go, starting at 2 p.m., is going to be uh, presenting an evening-length dance show choreographed by Hannah Dusek. Explores the concept of endangered species and how they try to survive in a world that is solely dominated by humans. So they have a 2 p.m. show and a 7.30 p.m. show, and I believe this is at Westside Theater. Um, 33rd 
uh, 33rd annual Mud Garden Party, Missoula Urban Demonstration Project is uh, holding a garden party. They have a, their own tool library. It's a great way for people to uh, get involved with gardening without having to break the bank. And it, it, it is a great way to learn some landscaping tools along the way. Andrea Harcel is going to be playing uh, music at Imagination Brewing Company starting at 6 p.m. on Saturday night. Cahoots at the Jack Saloon is going to play some country music starting at 7 p.m. Uh, Monks is going to be uh, doing some um, electronic music featuring the uh, guy Mr. Bill at 8.30 p.m. And then we got karaoke at Westside Lanes at 9 p.m. You got uh, country music at Sunrise Saloon's Trent, Trent Bo Brooks live at 9.30 p.m. Chris Moon every Saturday at the Badlander. Jeff Crosby band at the Top Hat at 10.30, 10.15 p.m. at the Top Hat playing some country music. And then for your Sunday, uh, they have some special events happening at Pain Awareness Month. Uh, at the Pain Sway Walk and Talk. This is Discover Ease in Movement. This is September is Pain Awareness Month. Chronic pain is the single greatest cause of disability and pain is the most common reason for seeking health care, um, including co um, conventional medical care and complementary medicine. Modern research gives us insight to where they reduce pains and uh, pain-related disability. Pain Savvy Walk and Talk was started in, with the goal of helping people acquire the knowledge and skills to overcome and prevent chronic pain. So it's at Discover Ease and Movement, and that's what's happening there. Uh, Garden City Salsa is going to do the Rocky Mountain Valley Theater. Uh, it's a great way to learn some salsa starting at 1 p.m. The Lost Cause Trio at the Jack Saloon is playing some country music on Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, Green Ski, Bluegrass at the Woman Theater at 7 p.m. that night. And then funny uh, open mic comedy at 8 p.m. at the VFW. And wrapping things up with some karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon starting at 8.30 p.m. So those are your events and more. I didn't have any city council, which is why I spared about 20 plus minutes on my regular show, but I wanted to thank you guys for joining me this morning. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.